do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The will of God is that you be transformed in your thinking so that you think about yourself the way he thinks about you. I know a lot of us have a lot of work to do because we don't think very much of ourselves. But here's the, here's the truth of what God has done, and he's made you his very own child. He's made you a child of God. You are not junk. You might think of yourself as not being worthy to receive being a child of God. But it's not anything you've done. It's what Jesus did at the cross. Amen. See, Jesus walked a perfect life. He never sinned. He always resisted the devil when the devil came with different thoughts. The Bible tells us that Jesus was tempted every way that we are tempted. But he rose above the temptation and resisted the devil with the written word of God. When, he, when the devil came to him and said, if you are the son of God, then turn these stones to bread. And Jesus said, he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, I read an article this morning, and I was looking over a, one particular ministry that I follow, and they were having a, uh, what do you call that when you go on a trip on a ship? <laughs> a cruise. <laughs> Why can't I remember these things? <laughs> a cruise. They were having a cruise, and you could sign up, and, and they were going to Alaska. And I was reading all the things that they were going to do, and they were going to visit this place and visit that place. And they were, they were also going to, you, you could choose on one of their trips when they were on dry land that you could pan for gold in one of the rivers. I thought, hey, that'd be pretty cool, panning for gold. But you know what? The Word of God is more precious than gold. The Word of God, if you have the Word of God, the promises of God, you can get whatever you need. Amen. He's already made the promise. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all the things that you need will be added unto you. God will supply your needs. The Apostle Paul said this, he said, My God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If you find treasures, if you find golden nuggets in the word of God, that's what you hold on to. They're more precious than actual gold. They're more precious than the job that God brings your way or your bank account or your lawyer. Listen, your bank account could disappear tomorrow. Amen. We know that back from, you know, 20, what was it, 2008. We had a recession and a lot of our, what we thought was our savings, our 401k, it took a dive, didn't it? You cannot trust, well, first of all, you can't trust politicians because <laughs> they're running for office and they'll promise you anything. But God's promises are better than gold. They will come to pass if you will do your part. And your part is to renew your mind to God's way of thinking. In Isaiah, God said, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. But he was talking about our earthly thoughts. We had a message today. Uh, uh, one of the gifts of the Spirit were uh, spoken by God through one of our members here. And you all heard it, that, that we should listen to God's voice. We should pay attention to his voice. And that's what we can count on. We can count on God, but we'll have to do our part. This won't just fall on you like cherries off a tree 
or apples off of a tree. It's not going to just happen automatically just because Jesus has already paved the way for you to live an abundant life. You're not going to live that life unless you accept it. Jesus took the sin of the world upon himself at the cross, didn't he? He took all the sin of the whole wide world, but everyone did not accept it. You must receive what God has told you that you could have. Amen. So when, when you renew your mind, you become transformed and you won't think the old way, the earthly way, the world's way of thinking, but you'll think a higher way. You'll think God's way. It's a higher way. God's way is always holy, and it's always right, and it's always good. The earthly way, matter of fact, while we're there talking about the earthly way, the earth is still cursed. Since the beginning of time when Adam sinned, the earth became cursed. And the only way out of the earth-cursed way of thinking is to renew your mind, to God's way of thinking. And how do you do that? You, you can memorize scripture. You can take a, a scripture that's really important to you. It, maybe it jumps off the page at you when you're reading. And you could memorize it. You could think about it. Um, meditation is simply thinking about something. The world has their ways of thinking. They made, you know, I, I remember I grew up in the 60s, you know, so there was back then they, they told us, you know, transcendental meditation, you know, what you have to do is think about your navel for two or three hours and, and chant different words. The 60s were corrupt, man, I'm telling you. Say, thank God I'm not the, from the 60s. You could say that if you want to. But listen, the real way, they, that was a cheap imitation of God's way of meditation. Meditating on the Word of God. Like we did a minute ago, it's even speaking the Word of God so that you can hear the Word of God for yourself because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing the Word of God. And I have news for you. You believe you more than anybody else in the world. If you say something, you believe it. Amen. If I say something, you might believe it or you might not. <laughs> But when you hear yourself quote the scriptures out loud, you quote a Bible verse that you have memorized. It's a good thing. That's part of mem meditation. Or if you just take a verse and you're thinking about it and thinking about it. God made, he made me his child. He made me a new creation in Christ Jesus. And you just think about that all day long. That's when you'll be transformed in your thinking. You'll renew your mind to what's already happened on the inside. You have a new spirit. The Bible says that you have within you all the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit has been put in you, which is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, meekness, temperance, faith. All of those things are in you, but we don't always walk in love, do we? We don't always walk with patience. We don't always walk in faith and not by sight, like the Bible says. But if you meditate on that scripture from Galatians, meditate on that, that's what's in me, and you bring it out. It's like the, in the olden days, back in the 60s, <laughs> say that again, we used to take pictures with a camera. But you couldn't see the picture right away like we can nowadays. You just take out your cell phone and take all the pictures you want. But back in the 60s, we would have to take the picture. Then we'd have to go down to Walmart. Well, Walmart wasn't around back then. Kmart. <laughs> Kmart <laughs> was back in the 60s. So uh, you have to take down there and get it developed, didn't you? Come on, say developed. developed. See, what your job is to get it, what's inside of you, 
get it developed so it's on the outside. Develop your faith walk, your love walk. You develop these things by renewing your mind and being transformed into the way that God thinks. So here's what we're going to do today, a couple of different things. We're going to talk about two things mostly, and that is this. You can win the battle of the mind, but you're going to have to do it on purpose because you have an enemy who's going to be bringing you thoughts that you're no good. You think you're forgiven, but really you're not forgiven because you sinned again today. The devil will bring these thoughts to you. I don't know about you, but I remember when I was born again, I knew almost nothing about the Bible. I mean, I, I was raised in a, a church, and I went to catechism, but you know how that is when you're eight, nine years old. You're not really paying attention. I was, most of the time when I was in catechism class on Saturday, I was looking outside and seeing if the weather was okay to play baseball again. It's all I was, to, baseball was on my mind. So even though I had memorized, see, you can memorize a scripture. I had to memorize the Lord's Prayer and the, the Apostles' Creed and, and all those good things. Those are still good. I love all those things that I memorized. But you can memorize something and it's just in your brain. Your mind is different than your brain. Because your mind is connected to your heart. The Bible says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The Bible doesn't talk about the brain so much because you can have all the knowledge of Scripture more than I have or more than anybody else in here has, and it still isn't in your heart. Because getting it down in your heart, you have to think about it and think about it and confess it, profess it, the promises of God, before it gets down into your heart. When it gets down into your heart and then you speak words of faith, something happens. Mountains move. Sin has to go away. The devil is resisted and has to back off. So... One word, I'll tell you this right now, one word from the devil can keep you captive. He can put a thought in your mind about doing something that you know good and well you shouldn't be doing it. The Holy Spirit's already working on you and saying, oh no, that wouldn't be a good thing. That's not written in the Word of God. That is not what Jesus bought and paid for you to do at the cross. So let's look at 2 Corinthians for a minute. 2 Corinthians. And th this is a very powerful chapter of the Bible. I love this chapter. There's so many. I could read the whole thing. Maybe you ought to do that later on when you get home. But the, the Bible tells us, and, and you can look at chapter 4 right away, starting in the... Uh, we could start in verse 1, but let's skip down to verse 4. Here's what the Bible says. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. And you can stop right there for a minute. Who is the God of this age? The God of this age is God with a little g. Because the devil deceived Adam... Like he's deceiving us right now today. The devil is lying to us. He's speaking words that are not true. They're, he's trying to condemn you about old sin. This is the devil's job. Matter of fact, it's his only weapon. The devil does not have a pitchfork where he can stick you. He doesn't show up on your doorstep in a red suit, horns, and a pitchfork. He comes disguised as something that might be good. I remember a song in the 60s. 
the Beatles wrote the song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, you know. And I thought it was talking about an angel with diamonds or something. It wasn't talking about that at all. It was a deception of the devil. It was talking about hallucinogenic drugs. The, the, the Beatles were talking about. The devil speaks through people. And he'll speak to you in silent words. Just a thought. The devil will plant a thought in your mind. And it's up to you to do something with it. If you take that thought and you entertain it. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but it happens to me every once in a while. I'll be minding my own business and the devil, I'll be driving my car or whatever, and the devil, and this is not God because God does not condemn. The devil condemns. The devil will remind me of something I did a long time ago. Amen. And all of a sudden, I'll start thinking about it. Before I know it, you know what you're doing? You're meditating on something in the past. You start watching reruns. Amen. You could watch a rerun of your past for about 20 minutes. And then all of a sudden you wake up and say, hey, what are you doing? What was that commercial back in the 60s? The guy had um, aftershave and he'd, he'd go like that. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> some, of you, some of you even know you haven't even been in the 60s. You already know. But listen, there was also a cartoon in the 60s. This isn't in my notes. I don't know where I, you know, this is. I, I believe it's from God, though. This thought is from God because it's a good lesson. Back in the 60s, they had this cartoon. And a little tiny little devil was on your shoulder, this shoulder. And an angel was on this shoulder. And they're both trying to tell you something. That's really true. That's our battle right there. The devil wants you to get thinking about his thoughts. And God wants you to think his thoughts. There's a battle going on, and you are the one in the middle, the deciding factor. I'm never going to make it. I'm not going to get my prayer answered just like I didn't get it answered the last time. That's a thought from the devil. That's what stops a lot of our prayers from being answered. We'll respond to the call or the thought that the devil has. We'll be praying the prayer of faith in church. I believe God is going to bless me this week. You can even read what the Apostle Paul said. My God's going to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm going to get a new job. I'm going to get the, and the blessings of the Lord are going to come upon me and overtake me. And then when you get outside the door, the first thing is going to happen. Somebody's going to say, can you pay your bills this month? You can't pay your bills, can you? The thoughts are going to come. You know, I can't pay those bills. Oh, yeah, I've got all those bills are sitting on my kitchen table, and I can't pay them. You'll start responding to the devil's thought. God doesn't want you to think that way. He wants you to think, I am a child of God. Come on, put your hand on your hips. Put your hand on your hips like this, kind of like with an attitude. And say, I am a child of God. Come on, say that again. I, come on, shake your head a little bit. I am a child of God. Yeah, you do that to the devil. Now, we don't do that with God. We are, we, we are submitting to God, aren't we? We're humble. We humble ourselves. But the Bible tells us, humble yourself before God and resist that dirty rat. He's a real being. I know a lot of Christians want to, want to think, well, let's not talk about the devil because that's really not in the 21st century. Come on. The devil is alive and well. Amen. Why do you think there's so many sick people on the ninth floor that have lost their mind in the hospital? Amen. The devil does that. God doesn't do that kind of stuff. That's right. That's right. The devil is alive and well, and you are going to have to do something about it. Amen. 
you're going to have to reject the thoughts that he brings. See, he wants to blind your mind, the mind of your heart. As a man thinks of himself in his heart, so is he. Don't allow yourself to watch the reruns of your old sins. Put a stop to it right there and say, the blood of Jesus has forgiven me of all my sins. Amen. And I know, you know what, that thought is not a carnal thought. It's not a worldly thought because it doesn't make sense. God way, God's ways do not make sense to the earth-cursed ways. They're higher. They're above that. God is a giver. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God is a giver. In the world, the world's way of thinking is, is I'm going to get all I can and I'm going to sit on my can. That's what the world, I'm going to do, I'm going to look out for number one. And if somebody does me dirty, I'm going to get even. That's not God's ways. God's ways are I'm going to overcome evil with good. I'm going to give and God's going to bless me back in abundance. Yeah, that's God's way of thinking. If you want to be an overcomer, if you want to win the battle of the mind, you're going to have to start thinking the way God thinks. Amen. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. There's no other way to think. The politicians, are they going to tell you what way to think? No, because you can't trust them. They are... Well, some of them, but they are just like the devil. They speak lies. They speak with forked tongue. Yes. They speak deceiving words. Yes. See, back in the 60s, they told us if we, would, if we would go on these certain kind of drugs, we'd take a trip and we wouldn't want to come back. Man, I'm going on a trip. I'm going to... I'm gonna, uh, rise up out of my body and, and I'm going to look down on myself and on this trip that I'm going to take. No, you know, the, the devil's a liar. It's not going to be a good trip. It's going to trip you up and cause you to have a great fall. It's going to be Humpty Dumpty all over again. The, be the devil has plans for you and that's to hurt you. The devil comes to steal kill and destroy. Jesus came to give us life and that more abundantly. He came to make you a winner. Now who are you going to listen to? The father of lies like Jesus said he was? He's been a liar since the beginning. He lied to Adam and Eve and he lies to us today. He lies to us. And it could be something very simple. It could be just, well, you know, listen, you're tired. Why don't you just stay home from church today? But you know what? God has a plan for you to hear the words that he has for you. He's, he's got encouragement for you to don't give up. Don't lay down. Don't, don't do a little folding of the hands and folding of the arms. But, but rise up out of that. Because I've caused you to be an overcomer and more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Not in yourself. You're not going to do it your own, your own way and your own willpower. No, God is going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the wisdom. He's going to give you the transformation to walk in this life as a new creation. Man, I'll tell you, that, that's good news. That's good news. I don't know why anybody would want to refuse the good news. Man, this is good news for anybody. If somebody's walking out there on the street and they're homeless, somebody's walking out there and they're addicted to whatever, God has freedom. God has a way where there seems to be no way. His ways are way higher above our ways. He's got a way where there seems to be no way. Do you want to be a winner today? Yeah. Do you want to rise above the earth-cursed way of doing things and live the abundant life that Jesus has for us? Amen. I'll tell you what, it's going to take work. 
not works, like you gotta do good works. It's gonna take work on your part to get your mind to match what God did on the inside of you. Because your, your inside, your spirit man has been born again. Yes. It's ready to go to heaven right now. But your body isn't born again. Your body wants to eat 14 Twinkies today. Your body has a thirst for just the lust of the flesh, right? And your mind doesn't, isn't born again. Your mind wants to think any old thing. Turn on the television and you think what the television tells you. Amen. I'm telling you what, you ought, to, you ought to stay, number one, away from the talk shows. Because if anybody is inspired by the devil, <laughs> it's the talk shows. <laughs> I tell you, and it, you know, you watch some of those soap operas, you know, all my children, and as the stomach turns, and <laughs> you know, all those. You're just going to be thinking the wrong way. You're going to be thinking the earth cursed way. They're going to show you all kinds of pornography on television. Well. Not yet, but they're getting there, aren't they? they, they, they they're, they're cursing like up a storm, and you feed yourself with that? No, you want to feed yourself with some good food. This is faith food. This is spirit food. Get filled up on this, and you won't have to go through some of the things that the earth, the people in the earth have to go through. Because you know what the Bible tells us? We have been redeemed. You know what redeemed means? You've been bought back. Amen. My grandmother bought me my first baseball glove <laughs> with S and H green stamps. <laughs> and you know what they called the green stamp center? The redemption center. You go and you trade in your stamps and you walk away with a brand new baseball glove, man. Yeah. Yes. Jesus redeemed you. He took all of your sin. You took, the re your, you took your sin to the redemption center where Jesus was at the cross. Took your sin and you walked away white as snow cleansed white as snow on the inside yes. you have to take care of the outside you have to tell your body your spirit man should be so full of faith so full of God's word that the spirit man tells the body what to do oh no you don't Amen. stay away from the cookie jar <laughs> the spirit man should dominate your thinking you're not going to think that thought today. You're not going broke today. God is blessing you today. Oh man, this is good. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's look at that. Verse 4. You see, you're in a battle. And a word from the devil will cause you to be trapped. To be bound up. You take the word like, you know, just try this, just try this little cigarette or pill or whatever it is. Just try it. And you say, well, you know, all my friends are doing it. And if you think about it, you meditate about it, the next step is you do it. And you should be the opposite of that. You meditate on the Word of God, you think about it, you think about it, you think about it, and the next thing is, you do it. You do, you be a doer of the Word, because doers of the Word are blessed in all their ways. 2 Corinthians 10.4 says this, the weapons of our warfare, you see, I know some of you are sitting there thinking, I don't want to be in a battle. I don't want to be in a war. It's too bad. You're in the earth. As long as you're in the earth, you're going to have to battle the thoughts that come your way. Yeah. I know a minister back in the 60s, he used to say, thoughts are going to come around. Thoughts are going to go. You can't stop the thoughts from coming as long as you're on the earth. The birds of the air fly over your head, but you don't have to let them nest in your hair. Amen. 
or for some of you just on top of your head. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> yeah, you do not have to accept those thoughts. You resist those thoughts. Matter of fact, I'll tell you this, you resist everything that Jesus bore for you at the cross. You resist sin and you resist sickness. You say, I resist you in the name of Jesus. And they come on the TV and they tell you the swine flu is coming around. What are you going to do with the swine flu anyway? You're a people. You're not a swine. The bird flu, the cow disease, the mad cow disease. You ought to speak up and say, I resist that in the name of Jesus. I cancel that out. That's not going to come near my dwelling. I have a promise of God. Psalm 91 says, that will not come near my dwelling. But the angels of God encamp around about me. You see, every day you have an opportunity to say either I'm, go I'm going down by the numbers Nothing good ever happens to me. You can say that, or you could say, I am going to rise above this challenge. I am going to rise above. I will be more than a conqueror because of what Jesus did for me. You're going to have to do one of two things. You're going to have to speak up. And most of us are saying, well, I'm probably going to be the first one to get swine flu on my block. Wow. Don't ever say that. That is not resisting. And some people say, well, listen, you just got to face reality. Reality is a earth-cursed world. You want to go the ways of the world? It's already cursed. The blessings of the Lord are in the kingdom of God, the unseen kingdom of God. Your answer is already there. Your healing is already in the unseen spirit realm, where heaven is. That's why God said, <laughs> Jesus said, God himself said, pray this way. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is there sickness in heaven? Is there sin in heaven? Listen, because there's no devil in heaven. That's why. That's why you can be an overcomer even if somebody calls you a nut. Listen, you can call me a nut, but I'm screwed onto the right bolt, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians 10, 4. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. See, the devil wants to build a stronghold in your mind. Yes so that you'll never take advantage of what's already been done in your spirit. You won't do it because you think you're worthless. You're not worthy. You're just a worm. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I'm going to eat some worms. Ever heard that song? From the 60s. <laughs> Anything? <laughs> never mind. Casting down arguments, verse 5. Casting down imaginations. Casting down every thought that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Are you reading that? Yes. This is the thoughts you cast down. If, it cast, if it's trying to get you to think different than the way God thinks about you, you need to cast it down. If you look up the Greek, it really means to throw it down. You know, just pretend like you're on worldwide wrestling. You know, throw that baby down. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now listen real close. The Word of God tells us this in John. Don't turn there. In John, the book of the Gospel of John, the Word of God tells us, so, so it was during the Last Supper that Jesus was given to the disciples, said, so it was during the Last Supper, Satan, having already put a thought of betraying Jesus in the mind of Judas. It started with a thought. Yeah. I wonder if it would do me any good if I turned Jesus over to the soldiers. Oh, yeah, it will, because as I think about it, 
they, they will probably pay me money. Yes. And they did. They gave him a bag full of money. If he, did, if he rejected that thought, the devil would have had to find somebody else. One thought held him captive. One thought can hold you captive. And then the Bible says later on in Luke, and Satan entered Judas. See, it, could, it starts with one thought, and the devil can take possession of your life. Amen. See, when you, if you're addicted to alcohol, drugs, whatever, pornography, if you're addicted, you need God's help. Amen. You need to get deliverance out of that by the name of Jesus. But you are held captive. You're in bondage. It would be just like you being in chains. If you're an alcoholic, drug addict, you're bound up. You're in chains. You're not free to do whatever you want to do. No, you're captive until you get set free. And it all starts, nothing, nothing happens at all until you have a thought. I want to give you some good thoughts. You are more than a conqueror. You are a winner in Christ. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. You see, the first, first thing then the devil's going to say, hey, you're not righteous. You know, the one over on this shoulder. You're not righteous. I know what you did last night. And that, is, that might be true. But... Jesus is the one who made you righteous on the inside. You didn't earn righteousness of God. And besides that, righteousness is just an old English word for being right with God. That's all it means, right with God. By the blood of Jesus, you are right with God. You may sin, but you can ask for forgiveness. And God will re-cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Isn't this good news today? You are the one who determines what you think. And when that thought becomes a reality, see, all, uh, you say, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you say that, and you, you're faced with a challenge. You're faced with a lot of challenges every day. You quote a promise from God so that you become that thought. See, we shouldn't just have a good news message. We should be a good news message. We should be a living example because the, you know what the world is looking at? They're looking at you and me. And they decide what they think about God when they look at you and when they look at me. That's all they know. They don't know the Word of God yet. They want to see some examples. That's why the Bible calls us ambassadors. We are really citizens of heaven. We're just walking through this earth. To be a witness of what heaven is going to be like. Amen. Come on, let's all stand. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your word this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've encouraged us. We thank you, Lord, for what you have already made us, a new creation in Christ. We thank you so much, Lord God. And we look to you for supply, supplying every one of our needs. In Jesus' name, if you believe that, say amen. amen.